Hey everyone, it's Angie Lee. Today I'm going to be giving you my tips and tricks on how to make the most out of your next technical career fair experience based on my experience at Grace Hopper Celebration of Women in Computing 2014. So without further ado, let's get started. <laughs> give you some background. I'm going to this event and it's massive. There are 8,000, about 8,000 women attending and who knows how many booths are there but it is crazy. I mean just take a look. I've never been to a career fair of this size and I've never been to a specialized technical career fair experience. So I thought, you know, hey, maybe let me share some of my tips and tricks um, based on my first time for other first timers. Can we say GHC 2015? Hello. First tip I have for you is to take a real hard look at your resume. And I'm not talking about format. I'm not talking about typeface or spacing or anything like that, you can easily find those with a quick Google, um, Google search. But what I'm actually talking about is take a look at the people that you're really interested in. What kind of positions are you trying to find out of this experience? What would be the most ideal thing? And if you look at their job uh, description, compare it to the keywords that you have in your own resume. Try to figure out if there's any way that you can change your terminology, not to be deceitful in any way, but maybe to be more aligned in the terms and the keywords that they're using. So the recruiters are very uh, experienced at this. They'll be taking in a massive line of people uh, student after student, applicant after applicant, and they need to compare very rapidly. So it's easy to imagine that they've already got the keywords down pat. And if you don't have them on the resume, they can clearly assess in a matter of seconds based on what you have on your resume if that's what they're looking for. First day, the event was three days long. I The first day I went there and I... Um, just checked it out. I was like, I don't need to talk to anybody. If I talk to somebody, that's cool. But it wasn't my goal. I just really needed to feel, um, feel out the place. And then along those lines, I didn't jump in for the big guys, my top picks, like I'd, I'd mentioned. Instead, I went ahead um, and decided to talk to smaller companies who may not have been on my top three, top five, but it's very important to just feel out, understand what a technical a recruiting process is like. Get your practice done early. So I went to the venue, I tried out some companies that um, I hadn't really considered, and the other outcome of that is maybe you even find that this is a really interesting position that you'd actually like to apply for. The other tip I have for you is just understand that not every company is going to have the right fit or position for you, either it's culture or it's what's available at the time. So try not to get so downhearted about that. And I know it can be incredibly hard, but <clears throat> what I did was I was, you know, we all have our devices, smartphone or whatever, but I would definitely make it possible to access comments or recommendations that people have already made about you. So maybe you've applied to to be um, in a position for some organization and you've asked your employer to write a recommendation for you. Maybe you're looking for a job and you had a recommendation. Go back to those recommendations and look at the highlights about yourself. What are you really good at? What value do you bring to a company? Because when you have a conversation with a recruiter and it doesn't go so well, it can be so easy to forget about those things and you need to take a look. You know, If you have a bad experience, and it can happen. Um, just take a look back at these things. So what I've learned is to actually have a print copy. As crazy as that may sound, I have a print copy of recommendations that I've received from other people. So I can take a look about it, look back at it, and get um, an ego boost, essentially. And I recommend that you do the same, whether it's through your LinkedIn app on your phone or if you have a little notepad where people have made comments about you and you can look back at what people think about you so that you can go back into the next recruiter and have the utmost confidence like ever. 
I feel like I gave you a few good tips to get started and if I had anything else or if you have anything else, please be sure to put them in the comments down below and let me know if any of these tips and tricks worked out for you. All right, and with that, thank you so much. I hope you enjoyed this segment um, and I will be back with you soon. Angie Lee, today I'm going to be talking about. Oh, okay, no. <laughs>